Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. A cozy fireplace can add an extra warm feel to your photos at any time, but it works incredibly well with the festive photography. Now what to do when the fireplace cannot be used or it doesn't look the way you want it? Luckily for us, there is a way to add or enhance fire in Luminar Neo. To do this, we will need the help of layers panel and few fire overlays. If you want to follow me along, and get the set of fire overlays, head into the video's description and download the files from there. The fire overlays we're going to be using are coming from our new winter bundle and I want to take a few seconds of your time to tell you more about it. Our brand new Luminar Neo winter bundle includes over 860 winter assets for your favorite tools in the software. Get it and get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs and presets. Get all of that and transform your winter images with just a few clicks. To top it off, the winter bundle includes bonus festive mini bundle full of incredible assets for the festive season. To get the best offer, follow the link in the description of this video or head directly to our website cleverphotographer.com. And now it's time to start with the edit. As you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in a catalog module. Let's select the first sample file and then move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or hitting E on your keyboard. Now looking at the image, it's a beautiful scene, very festive with lots of nice colors, the Christmas tree and everything. And there would be one more thing to top it off and that's to have a fire in the fireplace. So how are we gonna do this? Once again, we're gonna use the overlays here. So we need to go into our layer panels on the left side of your screen and here click on the plus sign. After that, click on load image and navigate towards the location where you downloaded your sample files. Inside there should be a folder called assets. So just open it. And one by one, let's import each of the files here. So we can start with the first one. Now you really have a two options. You can double click on the image or you can click on a open in a right bottom corner of the window. So let's do that. And again, load image. The second image, just double click. And the same thing, the third image here. So now we have three images here, three overlays ready to work with. So for this scene, we're going to be using the overlay with the wood. So let's click on it, select it, and it will be imported into our image. By default, it will be in the middle of our image and it will have a blue frame around it, meaning that it's selected. When we look at the layers panel, you can see our original image together with the fire on the top of it. Once again, having the blue frame indicating that it's selected. Now let's move our attention towards the layers properties. Anytime you have one of the layers selected, you can then adjust it in a layer properties here. So in the layer properties, what we want to do is to increase the opacity to 100. And as you can see, we have the fire and everything else become black. To adjust this, we need to go into the gray drop down box under the opacity slider where we can change the blend mode. When you click on it, we need to change it from normal to screen. Once you do that, you can see the black disappear and then we have the fire. Now, of course, we need to adjust the actual fire and place it in the fireplace. To do that, we're going to be transforming the overlay and we're going to start by using the little white dots in a corner of the overlay. You can use this to adjust the size of the overlay while keeping the same ratio of the image. Now, when you hover over it, you will get this little hand and that allows you to move it around the image. 
When you hover outside of the overlay, the arrows will change and now you can rotate the overlay around, which is quite helpful. So now let's adjust the size and place it in a fireplace, just to start with, something like this. Now looking at the wood, the wood will be hidden under this metal part. So let's say that it would be somewhere around here. We would like the fire to be a little bit bigger, so I think just somewhere around here is looking good. We can adjust it a little bit more, and once you're happy with the location, we can continue. Now to continue, it would be good to zoom in, and we can do that by using Command or Control Plus, or we can also go to the bottom of our screen, where we can click on the zoom shortcut, and select the zoom we're looking for. So let's say let's go for 100%, and again, let's just move around, I think maybe even a little bit closer. And again, using a space bar, we can move around and see what we need to adjust. Now, the next thing we need to, of course, adjust the fact that we don't see the metal and this flames should be again hidden behind this part of the fireplace. To adjust this, we're gonna use a simple masking. So let's make sure that we have our fire selected, which once again, you can say by seeing the blue frame and move back to the layer properties. If you don't see them, just click on it and it will open. After this, we're gonna go into the masking and in the masking, we're gonna be using a brush. When we go into the brush, the first thing we need to set is a paint or erase. Now we wanna erase certain part of the overlay, so we're gonna go into the erase. With the size, let's leave it for the moment and let's adjust the softness. Let's go all the way to, let's say five. After that, the strength, we wanna keep it on 100%. And I think for the moment we are quite good. So let's just zoom a little bit closer once again with command plus. Now, very simply, I want you to just click on the edge of the metal here, just one click. And after that, hold shift and click on the other side because we wanna create a line. So let's make a click and that will remove that part of the flame. Now you can still see a little bit of flame here. So let's just paint over it and it will all disappear. And we will do exactly the same at the bottom. Now, if you can't see the edge, what you can do is go back to the properties and then bring the opacity down a little bit so we can see the edge. So just somewhere around 20 is good. We can see the edge, no problem there. And we can go back to the masking. Again, we are still in brush. We just need to adjust again our size, softness and strength. So just the softness back to 5%. Strength 100, size 100%. So let's just click again on the beginning of the metal part here, one. And as you can see, I made a mistake because I was painting with the paint. But what we wanna do, we wanna erase part of the flame. So let's turn back to the erase. And again, one click at the beginning of the metal piece. And then holding a shift and one click at the end of it. So that removes it really nicely. Now again, we can just paint over the rest of the flames so they are not visible. Let's just make sure it's looking all good and I think it does. Once we're done with the brushing, we can go back to the properties and just increase the opacity again. Once we're happy, we can hit enter and zoom back out to see where we are. And I think it's looking really good. I'm really happy with it. Now what we can do, we can of course adjust the opacity of the flame if we want to. So we would go back to the layer properties and again, break the opacity down if we think it's a little bit too strong. Now, I would probably bring it down a little bit because looking at the fireplace, there is a glass, so I don't think it would be as strong. So I think just somewhere around 80. Once we're happy with that, we can do some further adjustments. While we still have the fire selected, we can now close the layer properties and we can go into the develop tool in the essentials. In the develop tool, we can of course adjust the exposure or brightness of the fire, depending on what you want. And we can also adjust the highlights or the shadows of the flames. It really is up to you. Once you're done with the develop tool, you can also go into the color tool and then into the HSL panel, where in hue, you can work with the red, orange, yellow, and sometimes a little bit of green to adjust the hue of the flames. So for example, you can make the orange in the flames a little bit more red or a little bit more yellow. It really is up to you depending what you prefer. And there is a little bit of yellow in it as well, so you can make it a little more orange or a little more green. And if you want, and if you have some red in the flames, again, you can adjust the red, you can make it a little more orange, or you can make it a little more magenta. 
equally you can still go into the saturation and adjust the saturation of the flames from here but if you're gonna be adjusting the saturation of the fire i would suggest you to use the vibrance or saturation sliders above it so once we're done here once we're happy with the flames we can just close this and apply it to the tool so now we are done with adding the fire and matching it to the rest of the scene but that's not it we are not finished what we're gonna do now we're gonna merge the two layers together and then apply more effects to it so it's a little bit more believable to do that we need to export the image so let's just make sure that we hit enter and jump out of any layer editing and then right click on the image and go into the export in the export window, you can change the name. So let's just call this fireplace. And then into the export setting, let's stay on none on sharpen, resize, we want an original. And then with the rest of the setting, we are going for the highest possible setting. So in a format, you want to go for the tip, leave the color space on sRGB, compression none, and with the depth, go for the 16 bits. Finally, with the resolution, it's up to you, but I would go for the 300 pixels on inch. We don't need the transparency here, so let's uncheck it. And once we finish, we can click on save. Now, depending on the size, format, and the resolution of your image, the exporting may take a few seconds or a few minutes. But once it's finished, we're going to continue from the catalog module. So now we are back in the catalog module, and we have our exported image ready. Click on it to select it and let's go back into the edit module. Now looking at it, we have the fire in and we have all the layers nicely merged together. So now we can apply editing to the entire image. The first thing we want to do is to apply a little bit of glow to the fire. For that, we're going to go into our main toolbar and then navigate towards the creative section and go into the glow tool. In a glow tool, we can use any of the focus you want, so you can click on a gray drop down box and choose between soft focus, glow, orton effect, or orton soft effect. Now, if you want to see how to use this tool, we have a full tutorial on that on our YouTube channel, and I will link it in a corner of the video now. But for us, let's stick with the soft focus and let's increase the amount. Don't worry about the entire image, just keep an eye on the fireplace. So let's go quite high, I think somewhere around 25. And then we can also jump into the advanced setting where we can increase the softness if we want. And we can also add some additional warmth. Once we're done adjusting that, we're going to use masking to just place it around the fireplace. So let's click on masking and then go into the brush. In the brush, we want to make sure that we click on paint because we just gonna paint this effect into the specific area of the image. Increase the size of our brush and with the softness, let's go somewhere around 80 and with the strength, let's start around 30. Again, adjust the size and just once you click once, the effect disappear from the entire image and it will only start to appear where you're going to brush. So for us, just around the actual fireplace. So something like this. So now we have nice glow around the fire and nowhere else. Now we can always double check the before and after by clicking on the little eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. So it's looking quite nice. We can continue painting if we want to. And once we're done, we can close the glow tool and continue. Now to make it even more realistic, we want to add additional glow in this part of the floor. To do that, we're going to go back up all the way to the top of our main toolbar, into the Essentials tool and into Develop tool. Now apply some exposure and go quite high and then go into the color section and increase the temperature. Now I know it's looking crazy, but don't worry about it. With the temperature, we go to 20 and with the exposure, I think 1.4 should do the trick. After this, we're going to go into the masking and in the masking back to the brush. Once again, we want to make sure that we are on the paint with the size, I think starting somewhere around 200. With the softness, let's go at maybe 90 and with the strength again around 30. Now we want to place a little bit of these highlights on the floor here. So just click once and once again, the effect will disappear from everywhere and we will just paint gently into this area, creating a little bit of extra glow, which would be there coming from the fireplace. 
Once you're happy, you can also place a little bit more on the top of the fireplace or the mantelpiece. So let's just paint there. And again, maybe just in this area and this area. Once we're happy with this, we can close it. And now to finish it off and bring everything together, we're gonna use the power of LUT in the mood tool. For that, we need to go back to our main toolbar and into the creative section. There, click on the mood tool and there click on the great drop-down box with the choose LUT. After that, click on add custom LUT file. And once again, locate the sample files and the assets folder. Inside, I kept for you one cozy Christmas LUT from our winter bundle. So just click on it and then click on add. It will take a few seconds and then it will be added to your list here. And after that, just increase the amount slider to see what you like. I think to finish the overall effect, I would then jump quickly to my essentials into the vignette and just bring the amount down until we have a nice vignette focusing on the center of the image. Now let's quickly have a look at the before and after before we apply the overall effects. And I think it's looking much better. So now you know how to add the fire, how to color match it with the rest of the image and how to apply other effects so it looks as realistic as possible. But before we're going to finish, I want to quickly show you how you can improve or enhance the fire if it's not exactly the way you want it. For that, we're going to use the sample file number two. So click on it to select it and then move into the edit module. Now looking at the fire, it's quite nice, but it's not exactly the way I would like it. So let's go back to our layers panel, click on the plus sign and let's select one of the fires we have here. So let's use the one with the flames quite high, click on it and then it will be applied to your image. Once we have it, once again, let's go back to our layer properties, increase the opacity and then go into the blend modes. In the blend modes, change it from normal to screen and again, the black will disappear. Now, just like before, we're gonna be using this little white handles to adjust the size and place it over the fire. Now, I know it's not looking great yet, but don't worry, we will get there. Now let's zoom in again by using command or control plus. And let's just make sure, first of all, that our fire is placed exactly where we want it. So I think something like this. Great. Now I think we need to apply a little bit of masking here. So again, let's go into the masking. Let's go into the brush. We're gonna be removing part of the fire and with the size a little bit bigger and with the strength, let's start on 30. You can leave the softness on 100 and let's very carefully just paint over the areas like here where we can shape the fire a little bit more towards the wood. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So I think something like this. Once you're happy with it, you can just zoom out and you can go back to the properties. So I think it's looking good. However, I think it needs a little bit of adjustment to match it with the original fire. So once again, make sure that the new fire is selected and then go straight into your main toolbar, essentials and color. And just like I told you before, we go into the HSL and looking at the original fire, it's a little bit more red. So we need to go into the hue and in the hue, we're gonna take the orange and turn it more towards the red. So I think somewhere around here. And then with the red, we wanna make it a little bit more orange. And with the yellow, we again want to make it a little bit more red. So this looks much more like the original. I think maybe we have a little bit too much red in the orange, so we can adjust that. And once we're happy, we can close it and continue. Once we're done here, if you want, you can quickly jump into the develop tool and increase the exposure to make it a little more visible or do anything else you like it. Now let's close this, apply it. And after this, the workflow would be exactly the same. You would export the image, bring it back, apply some additional glow or any other effects you may find suitable. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. 
for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.